Neutrophils can respond to a number of environmental signals, both foreign antigens and signals from other white blood cells. Depending on the stimulation they receive, they may change their responses and undergo chemotaxis or initiate phagocytosis or release some of their intracellular granules or produce more reactive forms of oxygen or even kill themselves and release a net of DNA known as a neutrophil extracellular trap. Thus, many of the receptors expressed on their cell membrane are receptors for local hormones secreted by other immune cells. Some of these receptors even allow the neutrophils, part of the innate immune response, to respond to signals from T cells from the adaptive immune response. When T cells make signals such as tumor necrosis factor, interferon, or interleukin-2, neutrophils may respond. Their lifespan may be prolonged. They may release their granules. They may even begin to produce MHC2 proteins, which allow them to present antigens to T cells. Not only can neutrophils respond to chemokine local hormones, interleukins, and TNF-alpha from other white blood cells. They can also produce chemokines and interleukins and TNF-alpha, which then affect other white blood cells, perhaps drawing them to a, the site of an infection or affecting their activity. Neutrophils are even capable of influencing T cells, which are part of the adaptive immune response. Signals released by neutrophils are capable of attracting T cells, affecting the differentiation of T cells, one class versus another, Th1 cells, Th2 cells, Th17 cells, activating T cells, in some cases suppressing T cells, such as during pregnancy, allowing the fetus to be tolerated inside the mother's body, and other effects. Thus, the neutrophils from the innate immune system not only signal other aspects of the innate immune system, but also provide important signals to parts of the adaptive immune system.